Okay, this is Misty Kiefer in uh, Idaho, where I am with the Idaho Statistical Analysis Center. Also with me is Thomas Strauss. He's our uh, senior research analyst, and Danielle Swearing. She is our research analyst as well. And we are partnering with the Idaho Council on Domestic Violence and Victim Assistance, as well as the Idaho Crime Victims Compensation Program. Um, Bailey, can you tell me how to advance the slide? Yeah, so at the top of your screen there, there should be a, you'll see a number six um, at the top, and then there's an arrow to the right of that. If you click that arrow, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> um, our project is a two-part project. Um, when we originally contacted the Idaho Council on Domestic Violence and Victim Assistance to ask about what type of project they would be interested in, they said that uh, when they were with the um, Idaho Crime Victims Compensation Program Director at the VOCA conference, that the idea of paying for forensic interviews was a, was a hot topic um, because it was overtaxing the victim compensation program. So the director contacted us and um, suggested we look into that and see if there was a way that uh, the victim assistance program with all of their funding could assist with um, paying for forensic interviews. And then as w discussions proceeded, we incorporated um, looking at gaps in victim service program. Um, there we go. Well, I already said that. The victim compensation program was getting overwhelmed with payment requests. Uh, for forensic interviews. So the plan of action is um, figuring out um, how many, well, um, wait, are they being used more often? So Victims Compensation Program found that they had a, a huge increase in the number of requests and amounts for forensic interviews. So that was one of the questions that we wanted to look at, as well as how, why, where, and by whom are they being performed? And then the average cost, so that we could develop a funding strategy uh, for um, the council on how they can um, address forensic interviews. Um, and on our second part, we wanted to gather data from several sources. Um, obviously, one would be a survey that we're going to send out to um, law enforcement and um, child advocacy centers, as well as um, victim uh, witness coordinators to gather information on forensic interviews themselves and who are they um, using and what the average cost is, um, if they don't use them, um, why not, and um, are they in an area where they can easily access um, a certified forensic interviewer. We also have access to um, stop sappers data, so we're going to use that, and, as well as the VOCA PMT information, um, data from the crime victim compensation, and we have a list of victim service agencies, as well as um, access to incident-based reporting systems, so we'll look at crime rates. And we'll gather all of this data and identify where, where the funding is being provided and where it's needed and is not receiving. So those are our partners. Um, 
In January, January, we met with the Idaho Council on Domestic Violence, as well as from um, those from Victims Comp and the Idaho Network of Child Advocacy Centers. And um, we've had discussions with the STOP Administrator as well. And the, the meeting was very helpful, especially when we um, talked to the directors of several child advocacy centers. Um, they assisted in looking over our survey and um, had some suggestions on some added questions and changes so that we got what we were looking for. Um, so far, this is a list of the tasks that we wish to complete. Um, check marks show what we have been able to accomplish so far. Um, some things are still um, partially done. Um, so the VOCA performance measures data um, is will be provided to us next week. Oh, I have somewhere to be at five, just not as early today. So thank you. Oh, sorry, Misty. Hold on one second. Let me just um, mute that person real quick. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. No problem. So we've developed the survey and made the recommended changes. We need to send it back to the IRB board um, to uh, make sure that they're okay with those changes. <laughs> Um, we have a list of child advocacy centers. We do have some crime um, victim compensation data, although we are um, looking to get a little bit more um, on details, uh, especially as the type, like why, um, why there was what type of crime and um, and the possibly the county. We're, we're having an issue in getting it by county because it just is listed by billing area for billing address. So we're having an issue with that, but we're still investigating, see if we can um, figure that out. There's, um, we've gotten a stop annual performance data uh, and we're looking to send out the survey um, once we have the final IRB approval for our additional questions. And uh, we still need 27, 16 and 17 data for NIBRS. And um, we'll gather all of that information and analyze it and then do a final write-up and fact sheet uh, for that. But we have we have created this Tableau dashboard so far to um, to look at everything. Uh, Bailey, does this have access to go to the website at all? I'm gonna um, put the link in the chat box here. Um, let me. Okay, so I just sent a chat to everyone with the link um, here. I can, if you have it up on your screen, you could also share your desktop. Is that something you want to do? Are you wanting to show it live? Yeah, we could do that. Um, let me. Um, if I could figure out how to do it. <laughs> yeah, let me. Here, I'm going to take the ball back. Um, let me see here. And I will share it for you. And if you just want to talk me through here, um, anything you want to show? I will hand that over to Thomas, since he was the main builder of this. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Thomas, uh, Stack Research Analyst here in Idaho. Um, so what I've put together so far is kind of a draft of an interactive dashboard that we hope to be able to post both on our websites and um, uh, at the VOCA administrator's website as well. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of information up here and a lot of it that isn't very clean yet, but as we add more pieces to this, we'll be able to uh, clean that up. It may make it a little more user-friendly. Um, 
So we can just take a, Bailey, if you just want to take a couple of random tabs, we can kind of go through here and see what we've got so far. Um, all right, so here we've got uh, a map of just about all the victim service agencies that we could think of in Idaho. Um, the filter on the map will allow you to see which counties have those types of uh, services in them. Um, so if you go to court assistance, those are our um, district court assistance offices that are in courthouses um, across the state that'll help you out with um, a lot of it is family law type stuff. They'll help you with paperwork for um, custody hearings and those kinds of things. The other thing you can do is you can hover over counties and see um, what the name of the agency is in that county. And if you click on a county, it will filter the table on the right-hand side and you can see what types of agencies are within each county that we have highlighted. So you can see Washington County has a court assistance office they have a multidisciplinary team that was identified by the uh, Network of Child Advocacy Centers as um, helping with those types of cases. And they also have some type of, um, of likely a nonprofit victim service agency um, within that county as well. So. That's about it for that tab. Um, the next one over, if you look at IPV, and set, oh, we can go there too. So this, one, this is our NIBRS tab. So we've got um, intimate partner and sexual assault victimization rates between 06 and 15 so far, and we hope to be updating that very soon um, with some, some more recent years. Um, you can look at the rates by county over there, the number of victims, um, the year you can toggle back and forth. Um, so you can go back in time there and see how the rates change over time, how the counties compare to each other. And then if you click on a county, you will see on the right side on the table, you'll be able to compare the county victimization rate to the overall state victimization rate for that year or over those 10 years. So you can see Idaho County traditionally has lower victimization rates for intimate partner violence than uh, the state overall. And let's go through one more here. Let's go to uh, child advocacy centers. Here we've got a map of um, the Idaho network of child advocacy center members and um, some statewide statistics on that table. Um, that's what we've been able to get from them so far. Um, we're not sure if we're gonna be able to get agency specific data or not, but they have provided us with um, statewide aggregates. Um, so you can look at that from 12 to 18. Some of those uh, variables are fairly new. Um, uh, uh, the new director took over in 2017, I believe, or 2016, and, um, and added some data points to their surveys when they were surveying their members each year. So um, limited data for some of those, but uh, for the most part, it's fairly consistent back through 2012. And then on the map, you can hover over those dots and you can see where those centers are actually located geographically. And so that's pretty much what we've got so far for this. Um, like I said, we'll be adding more later and all this is gonna, going to uh, feed our analysis and our report that we uh, put out at the end of this project. Thank you, Thomas. That Excellent. pretty Thank much you, summarizes Thomas. it. Great. Thank you both. Um, does anyone have any questions that they want to ask before we move on to our next state? You can feel free to enter them in, in the chat and I can read them out for you. Um, or if you can even of yourself and feel free to share verbally as well. And for those of you on the phone, um, I will go ahead and unmute you. Okay, no questions, it sounds like. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next state.